Just do it. First you make your habits, then your habits make you. Lucas Rimmer's Wall. We see everything up for the day. Not up a lot, but sort of a swing back, particularly when it comes to the stock market and gold. Bonds up again today, a little bit, 0.38%. We're going to jump through here. We do have some exciting news. Going to be sending this out tonight with the text messaging service to everyone who's a subscriber. If you're not subscribed to our text messaging service, we actually announce to you weekly vertical crossovers. We're going to also start announcing two-day recrosses on our charts. But we're going to have a weekly vertical crossover, it looks like, at the close of the market tomorrow, unless tomorrow's a big, big up day. That is going to be on the S&P 500. Here is what you do if you want to do a practice trade on this. Go ahead, set an alarm on your watch, your iPhone, whatever it might be. Make sure that you look at the market around 345 or so to do a buy-in, if indeed there is continued down movement underway. If tomorrow, for some reason, is a crazy up day and market surge because something happens, then you may hold off. But otherwise, I want you to, to consider doing a practice trade, either a put call or an inverse fund, as we look at the S&P 500. Now, I'll give you a quick and easy inverse fund, and we're going to put it at the end of today's video, the training we have on inverse funds. So watch for that. But you can see SH is the pro share short of the S&P. It's a single short. It's not a double, triple short. It's not one of those big leveraged ones. Still, shorts do have high fees. Remember, they're also recalculated quite often. So there are potential problems with them. However, we want you, that's why we want you to practice trade it. See what there is to learn on this. But you can see that SH has been going up over the last three weeks as the market has been going down. That is the S&P. The people who put together SH and manage it, their job is to meet percentage to percentage the down move in the S&P with up moves in SH. So again, something for you to look at. Gives you a little different perspective out there. Now, of course, you can just get out of, hopefully you've been out of for a while, any up move on the S&P 500 because we're going into our third week of down movement. But that all-important weekly vertical crossover looks like it will be in effect. So mark your charts, mark things, get them ready, set an alarm, be ready late in the day on Friday to potentially pull the trigger on a down move. Maybe you're going to buy puts. And again, practice trades are not a stock calling service. We're an education firm. I want you to practice with us to show that you can do this. This will be coming on our 15th weekly vertical crossover for the year of them 14 so far. Well, if this one works, uh, of the 14 we've had, 13 of those have been successful. The only one we had that did not work was the weekly vertical crossover going down on gold back in June. And then, of course, gold turned around and went up in July, and we rode that baby to great success. Now, let's go back, though. Let's jump in and go through these charts in the order we always do. What do we see happening? Price percent oscillator looks like it's going to be crossing over going down at the end of the day on Friday. Derivative oscillator is going to go negative on the weekly chart. Two-day chart. Now, remember, the, the last full two-day candle represented the markets of Monday and Tuesday. This one is now complete, represents Wednesday and Thursday. We see a lower low being reached on the bottom wick. No wick on top, solid red down candle. Derivative oscillator heading down. Look at that price percent oscillator spiking down even more. We look at the half-day chart. What do we see? We see down in the morning, bit of a recovery in the afternoon. Ended up pairing off at about 0.27% up. So that's not going, at least for Thursday, not going to affect that weekly vertical crossover going down again. We'll wait and see what Friday shows us. Price percent oscillator even heading down on the half-day chart. Now we're going to go from the S&P to the Qs, which crossed over going down last week. What do we see going uh, on in the candle? Still moving down quite strongly. Really nice. This morning, I think I was up about 5% for the day. I think I told you yesterday we're up 15% for the day. By the time it ended, of course, the market uh, did surge up a, a fair bit later in the morning and then paired that off. So it ended up up for the day 0.47%. So we ended up down a little bit for the day. 
But uh, what do we see going on? Well, we see the price percent oscillator heading down, derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. That is still looking quite nice for us with that weekly vertical crossover in effect. What about the two-day? Check it out. Still looks good. Price percent oscillator heading down at a stronger angle than it had been on that prior one. What does a candle tell us? Well, that's a green, solid green spinning top. It means a slowdown in that stronger down movement over the prior two candles. But again, still moving down with that price percent oscillator. Derivative oscillator actually peaked in its down movement back on last Friday. So we'll continue to watch, wait, see what there is to learn. Look at the half-day chart. We just got a lamination there. Down in the morning, bit of a recovery in the afternoon on the half-day chart. Price percent oscillators pretty much laminated over the red signal line. So we'll see what Friday has to show us. It's beautiful. Things are going swimmingly well. Now let's move and again, don't forget the training we put out yesterday, even when we had a super strong, beautiful day, we wanted to caution you to always, always remember when you enter a trade, you know you're getting out point for a profit and you know you're getting out point for a loss. You always make those decisions before you enter a trade and you keep to those decisions. Yes, you can ride it up higher if you want to, or at least sell maybe a third or a half of your position. Take some profits, let others ride. But when the trade doesn't go in your direction, when things crash, when they go bad, guess what you do? You take your loss, your first loss is always your best loss, and you move on. And I always try to reiterate that when everything looks like it's going great, because you can forget it. And if you forget those important lessons, I promise you, the market will take it from you. Now, what do we see going on on bonds up 0.38%? We look at the weekly chart on bonds, still confirmed down. It is getting flatter as far as the price percent oscillator goes, derivative oscillator losing momentum going down this week. So I guess it's gaining upward momentum, we might say, after heading down, heading down, heading down, since really it peaked all the way back on the 7th of August, then we've seen it trending down. So it's finally the derivative oscillator, which is our leading indicator. Don't forget, derivative oscillator is a triple smooth version of the relative strength index. So it's a leading indicator for us. So it is again showing some pairing off of that down movement. Like we said, price percent oscillator flattening. We have a green spinning top forming for the week, but we're still in a confirmed negative move or negative mood, we might say, two-day chart. Now, it crossed over, so we're going. Now, this could be portending. If the market keeps crashing, this could be portending bonds actually gaining some energy and heading up. And we have had a few people, as I'm working on the charts here, changing my arrow, which, again, I just absolutely love, uh, freestockcharts.com. Is it just not incredible to just watch this stuff work. I love it. So uh, we've switched our arrow around. We've had a number of people that have subscribed to the paid version of freestockcharts.com TC2000. Don't forget, with that, you can see in your show notes a link to the chart that we use at TC2000. We also have $25 off if you subscribe. So follow the link in the show notes and you'll save 25 bucks when you subscribe to TC2000. I think it's the best charting platform in the world. That's why I've used it for years and encourage other people to do so. We look at the red spinning top that we have now as things are crossing over, going up, derivative oscillator gaining upward momentum, price percent oscillator heading up. Look at the half day chart. And of course, you can see how it's building, pulling away from the red signal line up in the morning, pairing off a little bit in the afternoon on Thursday. So what are we waiting for on 20-year bonds? A potential weekly vertical crossover going up. When's it going to happen? Next week, the week after? Don't know. Might not happen. But again, if it does, what's that going to tell us? It's going to make us feel even more certain that stocks are, are going to continue moving down. Remember, all the big crashes have occurred in what month? October. What month are we heading into? October. So we'll watch, wait, and see. I'm not prognosticating, not going to make any announcements, not going to tell you what's going to happen in the future, because I really don't care. As long as the charts tell me what to do, that's what I care about. So that's where we are on bonds. Keep an eye on them. Perhaps crossing over going up might be our next weekly vertical crossover after tomorrow's in the S&P 500, which appears to be happening. 
Let's move to gold. What do we see there? Gold up for the day a little bit, 0.37%, but a big strong down week. Remember, we had that weekly vertical crossover two weeks ago on September the 11th, and we had sort of an up week this last week, a lot of indecision there prior week. I'm talking the week ending the 18th of September. And then this week, been a big down week for gold. Our short gold positions have done well. We really don't have an inverse fund to put gold, uh, to, to recommend to you to practice trade on gold. DGZ, if you look at it, the bid ask is way too far apart. It is very illiquid, so I'm not interested in it. So what does that leave you with? It leaves you with looking at puts in gold or just getting out of gold and buying it back later when it starts to go up. You know, it's called buying low, selling high, waiting for the price to drop and buying it again. You can do that too in your practice trades. You don't have to do inverse funds or options. But if you are interested in options, don't forget we have what I think is the best option training available anywhere. It's a three-part series available to our Patreon supporters at any of the Patreon support levels. So check that out and appreciate our Patreon supporters. Don't forget our next call-in live training session for Patreon supporters is Wednesday the 7th of October. So we see the price percent oscillator in gold spiking over going down, derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum on the weekly chart, two-day chart. We just completed the second strong down candle. That's four days of hammer and down movement. We can see where gold last week sort of rolled up and then started spiking over going down on Thursday and Friday, then really accelerated this Monday and Tuesday and hammered down even more on Wednesday, not so much down on Thursday. Like we said, derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Look at that half day chart you can see where hammered down on Wednesday, and then that started to slow down on Thursday, where things sort of rolled over up a little bit. So we'll continue to watch. Remember, we are still involved heavily into the weekly vertical crossover going down on gold. Some of you may have already cashed out of that yesterday. That was a good day. And of course, we have the weekly vertical crossover in effect on the NASDAQ 100 QQQ, and we are looking for a potential weekly vertical crossover at the end of the day on Friday on the S&P 500. That's where we are, folks. Appreciate you being with us. Appreciate our, appreciate our Patreon supporters. If you don't have our book, Charting Your Way to Wealth, follow the link in the show notes. If you're not a subscriber, it means you're not getting our special trainings. We've got a great training for you today. Do not allow the complexity of charting to scare you away. We put out trainings for you every single day to become a subscriber. It doesn't cost you anything. Go to chartingwealth.com, sign up for free. That list is never spammed, never sold. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.